Yo guys, Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. So I just picked up a copy of Softube Modular. Um, I realize this uh, has been out for just over 10 years now. Um, so it's been around for a while. I remember demoing this when it first came out. Um, so I've like over the past two years now just been um, uh, trying out various different options as well. Uh, so we're going to take a look at Softube Modular now. We're going to put together just a basic patch. I'll show you guys how to kind of hook, hook things up. Um, and just talk about like what the other options are and what the sort of benefits uh, and the downsides to Softube Modular is. Let's dive into Cubase and we'll check it out. Right, so here we go, Softube Modular. Um, I've, I'm demoing a few of the other uh, add-ons, so the Intelligel, uh, Intelligel modules I was interested in. Um, I'll take a look at the mutable instruments as well, although these are kind of... Um, uh, yeah, clouds is really, really good, but I, I do have a lot of stuff that does granular things at the moment. Um, so the thing that most impressed me with uh, Softube Modular, I just picked it up now for 50 bucks or something. They've got a sale running currently. Um, the thing that strikes me about this the most is the sound quality. Um, I just kind of, after trying all these other ones, uh, I, uh, Reactor's got the benefit of having uh, the Reactor user library. So there is a ton of um, uh, third-party or, or user-created modules that you can load up. Some of them really good, some of them not so good, but this is also kind of my problem as well. The same goes for VCV Rack. I know I'm going to have people jumping in the comments saying, oh, you got to try out VCV Rack. I have used VCV Rack. I like it as well. Um, my problem with VCV Rack and Reactor is just kind of um, module bloat, uh, should we put it? There's just so much out there, and it's uh, you know it's almost like a full-time job going through all these modules. Um, there's too much. I kind of like having a smaller palette to work with, uh, as is the case with Softube Modular. I had the same issue with uh, Cherry Audio's modular system, which I have as well. I have the starter bundle, but I actually ended up uninstalling it. I wasn't using it all that much. And it's also really good, but I, it just uh, it didn't quite have the sound that or the authenticity that uh, the Softube Modular has. It's very close to the hardware, which is kind of the experience that I wanted. I didn't want to have something that's... Um, that doesn't feel like a modular synth. Um, so sound-wise, like for me, the one other modular synth that I go to quite often is um, UHE's Basile, uh, which is quite a different beast. It's digital oscillators, uh, but you get some incredibly complex waveforms out of that. And um, it's also not modular in the sense that you can add and um, remove your own modules. Uh, it's pre-wired. It's a pre-wired system. You've got four oscillators, four filters, a number of really clever uh, utility modules as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love Bazil, but um, as far as this kind of Euro rack emulation is concerned, uh, I've been most impressed with uh, Softube Modular. I have also played around with a actual dupe for system as well, and this just kind of there's something about it which just feels you know uh, really close to that. So let's uh, let's just stick a couple of modules in here, and um, we'll just hook something up uh, so you can just take a listen. I'm going to stick to the dupe for modules, the ones that actually come with the... Uh, we might check out the BVD and the Vactral um, filter as well. I'm going to leave the <coughs> IntelliGel, uh, IntelliGel stuff alone for now. Um, so obviously these can be purchased additionally, so it can become quite expensive as well when you... Um, start buying all these other modules. So let's just grab a few essentials. Uh, we're going to need a, a MIDI to CV. We'll do a DAW sync as well, just in case. Uh, let's grab an audio mix. Uh, we'll do... We'll kind of just create like a bass patch first. Um, we'll do two oscillators from the Dupfer selection. Uh, we're going to need a amplifier two ADSRs, uh, we'll patch in a LFO as well just in case, grab a noise generator and a, uh, let's see, we'll try that filter and the LPG as well. Um, cool, let's just see what we got and uh, hook everything up. 
So we've got a couple of modules now. Um, the humidity CV is the most important. So this is how it's going to actually interact with, or how you're going to interact with it. Um, so this is the other thing um, that I much prefer over VCV rack with SoftTube Modular is the fact that it just works as a plugin. Um, I've had endless, endless problems with VCV rack with it not loading my sound card drivers correctly. Then trying to patch it through to Cubase is a whole nother nightmare. They used to have a uh, sort of a VST bridge thing which doesn't work anymore and there was supposed to be work being done on putting it into a VST format but uh, that just hasn't materialized uh, it being open source. Um, it's also quite unstable at times. I, I, I had quite a few issues with that, lots of crashes. Uh, and this for the most part just seems to work pretty well. Let's just get some audio in here first. Uh, we're going to grab a note, stick that into... Uh, let's actually just keep this clean as well. We're going to grab a multiplier. We don't have to use the multiplier for this, but just uh, for the sake of keeping everything neat. Uh, multipliers. Multiples. Um, so you have to click Edit here to move things around. Uh, we'll just move these over. But just keep. I kind of wish that you could move uh, that things would kind of automatically shift if you kind of put something there. It doesn't. You've got to kind of move each one uh, separately, which is rather annoying. Uh, let's put our multiples in here. We'll leave our audio mix down here for now. Uh, so let's uh, get our notes into our multiples so we can get CV into these. Um, we're just going to check that we've got signal. Oh, uh, this needs to go to our main Cool. So we have signal. Um, now we need to somehow gate that as well. So we've got our... Uh, we're just going to move these again. Just going to keep these. I'm going to stick our audio mix in here. Uh, we need to get this into an amplifier. Uh, well, let's, just control. let's just check quickly. That's our LFO. Uh, let's run the saw. Uh, we'll do the square into the mixer. And we'll do our saw and square on the second one as well. Uh, we'll run the output of our mixer into our amplifier. That is the CVN. Uh, so we want input, audio input. And we want to be able to control the volume with an envelope. So we're going to connect the gate. Uh, we should actually put another multiple for that, but we'll just do this one like this this time. Um, you can do like a splitter cable basically to run them both. It's just neater sometimes using the multiples to be sending it all over the place. Um, we're going to need to trigger this one and send the output of this to our CV input to control the volume. And the output of our amp now can go to the main output. Okay, uh, let's just take a listen to the, we'll turn down the square. Well, actually, let's put the square in on our first one, and we will bring in the saw. Saw should actually be there. So now we've got a saw and a square from the two separate oscillators. Uh, we can take this one range down a little bit. And let's um, dial in, I'm going to move our modulation down to the bottom. Uh, we'll move the LFO down here. And let's just link up our the CV out, or the output of our LFO to the pulse width modulation. Uh, PWCV2. Um, if you connect it to PWCV1, it uses the full range automatically. Uh, CV2 will give you, uh, uh, you can dial it in um, by yourself. Uh, and actually, we need to be going to oscillator 1. Which is going on now. 
So let's check out the filter. Um, I'm going to run the output of our amp into this one here. I'm going to run that into our. Uh, we'll check out the factual later. Uh, we'll run this into the audio in of our filter, and let's just move our filter up here. The envelope for the filter. We're going to send the output to CV two, and let's run. Let's try out the twenty four dB filter. We'll run that to. Yeah, and that just sounds fantastic then. I'm going to kind of just program in a little um, uh, roof here. I'll just stick this onto step input. Uh, step input, we'll do sixteenths. There we go. Loop that. And you see, this is why I love this over VCV rack. I mean, VCV's ra rack is great by itself. You do have effects and stuff that you can load in. Um, this is just so much easier for me to actually integrate into a, a musical project um, rather than just doing weird sounds in VCV rack. <laughs> Let's get some effects running on that as well. You do have a delay built into modular as well, but not. Uh, it requires a bit of setup. Um, it can be used for delaying actual CV inputs, uh, CV signals as well. So I'm just going to grab a Valhalla delay instead. Uh, let's maybe do our. We'll bring in a DW sync. Actually, we already have one. Let's bring a sample and hold and we will move this one down here and let's uh, set up the trigger to be our output clock let's do eight input oh sorry uh, we'll do the trigger input there we'll do the output of the LFO and then we'll send our sample and hold to there we go. Let's and I uh, will get a set a little distortion as well to this. We'll just use the internal and the saturation knob, which is also a free module. Uh, let's run our filter. Uh, 
I mean, really, really basic little patch, but um, just showcasing the sound. I, I think the, the the quality of the the models that they've actually done for these these modules is really, really, really high. Um, it just has this analog feel to it, which which I really like. Um, so my verdict uh, is it worth getting? Well, it depends. Um, it's not like a um, an everyday synth. Um, I think if you're wanting to get into modular, yes, for sure. Uh, simply because it, it works really well in the DAW, and um, I don't know the, the the other modular stuff that I'd tried, like Cherry Audio and uh, Reactor. While they work really well as modular synths, they just didn't have that same magic that this has. Uh, even though they're far more complex when it comes to their selection of modules. I just uh, I, I felt this was uh, this is a little bit more expensive. The base um, base price is eighty nine. Uh, you can pick it up on sale right now. Yeah, if you pick up some of the other modules, I can see this becoming a little bit more expensive. Um, but that said, you know, even just for the dupe for stuff, um, they're really good sounding modules. Uh, and I think also if you wanted to get into doing uh, more or buying a, a modular rack uh, this is a really good starting place to just kind of figure out what kind of modules you want to actually put into your your real world euro rack system um, so I've actually been looking at uh, some of the Behringer stuff now as well I'm waiting for them to release the Behringer Go case um, before I grab some of the modules I was also quite keen to wait for some of the system 100 stuff uh, I've taken a look at some of the Moog modules which look really nice um, but uh, I'd like to get a few of these System 100 modules as well into that rack. Um, we will see what happens. So I thought, you know, this is a good place to kind of start, see what kind of things you use the most in the patches you want to do, and then uh, you can take the plunge buying some actual modules for yourself. So cool, guys. I uh, hope you guys are all staying safe, and um, I shall chat to you again soon right here on the Marilla, Marilla Music channel. Don't forget to check out the website www.marulamusic.com And also if you guys are enjoying these videos, uh, show us some love, give us a like, hit the subscribe button and the notifications uh, button just so that you can stay in touch with any new videos that we have coming out. Um, yeah, I shall catch you guys again soon. Peace.